In 2017, Equifax, a multinational in the consumer credit industry, had been the victim of a major security breach. In this incident, attackers were able to exploit a vulnerability in the company website software. They gained access to social security numbers, addresses, and credit card credentials of 143 million consumers. Later investigations revealed that this could have been prevented if the web servers were properly configured to use the latest version of the TLS protocol. TLS is the newer, updated, and more secure version of SSL. The latest version of SSL had been deprecated since 2015. However, the name is still in wide use even today. Simply put, TLS does three things, authentication, data encryption, and data integrity. But to understand better what TLS does, let's imagine for a second a world without TLS. First, online banking and shopping would be at high risk. Credit card numbers, login credentials, and other sensitive information could be intercepted and read by attackers. This will lead to widespread fraud and financial loss. Since anyone with good or bad intentions and a good software to analyze the network traffic can capture data in transit, it's essential for sensitive data, but not only, to not be transferred in plain text over the network. It's essential for data to be encrypted. Also, without TLS, email would not be a secure method of communication. Emails sent over the network could be intercepted and read by attackers, making it easy for them to steal sensitive information. Second, without TLS, there will be no way to ensure that you're interacting with a legitimate website rather than a phishing site set up to steal your personal information. This would greatly increase the risk of identity theft and other types of fraud. Third, without TLS, data could be intercepted and modified. So, next time you're browsing the web or sending an email, think of TLS as your own personal bodyguard, keeping you safe and secure in the digital world. Secure Socket Layer is the security veteran of the internet. Its last version, 3.0, has been deprecated since 2015, but the name SSL stuck until today. Its grandchild, TLS, is the updated, more secure version of SSL. Moreover, any website that uses HTTPS is employing TLS encryption. Therefore, HTTPS is an implementation of TLS encryption on top of HTTP protocol. And while using HTTPS, we can rest assured knowing that our data won't be compromised. A TLS session consists of two phases, the handshake phase and the ongoing encryption phase. First, let's understand what a session is in the context of TLS. A session is essentially a conversation between two parties. It can either be for a fixed period of time or it can last for as long as the two parties are communicating. After the session ends, the two devices would have to exchange again identity information to reopen the connection. Now, why is the handshake phase necessary? The main purpose of the handshake is for authentication. Before doing anything, the client has to trust the identity of the server. To build trust, the server provides a TLS certificate, historically known as SSL certificate, and then they use the public key protocol for authentication. We'll see how this works in a bit. The second purpose of the handshake is to establish a shared secret key that will be used in the next phase for encryption. In the second phase, the shared secret key established will be used to encrypt all ongoing messages. First, the encrypted messages are transmitted to the other side. Then, they will be verified to see if there were any modifications during the transmission. If not, the messages will be decrypted with the same symmetric secret key. It's called symmetric because the same secret key is used to encrypt messages but also to decrypt them. We'll see later why symmetric keys are preferred only for the encryption phase. The certificate is a data file that contains the domain name, the person or the organization that owns the certificate, the authority that issued the certificate, the server public key and other data. For a TLS certificate to be valid, websites need to obtain it from a certificate authority. A CA is an outside organization, a trusted third party that generates and gives out TLS certificates. The CA will also digitally sign the certificate with their own private key, allowing client devices to verify it. Once the certificate is issued, it needs to be installed and activated on the website server. 
Web hosting services can usually handle this for the website operators. Once it's activated on the server, the website will be able to load over HTTPS and traffic to and from the website will be encrypted and secure. So, TLS certificates are what enables websites to move from HTTP to HTTPS. The public key encryption is utilized only in the handshake phase with the purpose of authentication. More specifically, we use the public key cryptography to encrypt data. The other key, also known as the private key, is used to decrypt data. This is known as asymmetric encryption. Now, let's see how the public key is used to certify the server identity. When the server presents the certificate, it also presents the public key to the client. First, the client verifies the certificate to make sure it's legitimate and that it hasn't been modified. If the certificate is valid, the client generates a random string and encrypts it using the server's public key. Then, it sends the encrypted string to the server. The server decrypts the message using its own private key. Now, both the client and the server have the same secret string. Then, they use this string along with other information to generate a master secret. And, both the client and the server use this master key to generate the session key. As we mentioned, this is the key that is used to encrypt but also to decrypt the data exchanged between the client and the server. But the public key process helps to ensure that the parties exchanging information are who they claim to be. This is possible because only the server that holds the private key corresponding to the certificates presented to the client would be able to decrypt the secret string and generate the same master secret. This helps to prevent man-in-the-middle attacks in which an attacker intercepts the communication and impersonates one of the parties. Encryption involves converting a message into a ciphertext. However, we have to consider the huge amounts of data transferred over the network, and all data must be encrypted. So the first requirement of the TLS encryption is to be really fast for huge amounts of data. In order to encrypt and decrypt data really fast, TLS uses two things, a symmetric encryption algorithm and a symmetric secret key. Symmetric encryption is generally much faster than public key encryption. The main reason for this is because it uses the same key both for encryption and for decryption. So, there are way less mathematical operations involved. Also, the symmetric key is typically much smaller than the public or private keys. So, we use this algorithm to encrypt and decrypt huge amounts of data. The other type of encryption, asymmetric or public key encryption, is generally much slower and is used only in the handshake phase. Also, this type of encryption helps to share the same secret key between the two parties without leaking it to the public. Then, the other important requirement of an encryption algorithm is to be impossible to break. The most common algorithms used by symmetric encryption are considered to be extremely secure. According to the NIST organization, it would take billions of years to break them using the current technology and methods. And last, TLS provides data integrity. This helps to ensure that data exchanged between two parties has not been forged or tampered with. For each message exchange, an additional code is calculated using the message, a cryptographic hash function, and the secret MAC key. The MAC key is generated during the TLS handshake. Then, along with every message, a MAC code is also sent. When the receiving party gets a message, it calculates the MAC for the message. For this, it will use the same MAC key and hash function as the sender. Finally, it will compare the MAC calculated with the one included in the message. If the MAC code match, it means that the message has not been tampered with and it can be trusted. Because of the complex process involved in setting up the TLS connection, some load time and computational power must be expended. The client and the server must communicate back and forth before any data is transmitted. This eats up precious milliseconds of load time as well as some resources for both the client and the server. However, the TLS handshake in TLS 1.3 requires one round trip instead of two, shortening the process by a few milliseconds. Another feature to speed up TLS is session resumption. 
This allows clients and servers that previously communicated to use an abbreviated handshake. So, the latest version of TLS hardly impacts web application load times, and the computational costs associated with the last version of TLS are mostly negligible by today's standards. Implementing transport layer security on your website involves several steps. Here's an overview of the steps you should take. First, in order to use TLS, you need to obtain a security certificate from a trusted certificate authority. The certificate will need to be verified by the CA and will include information about your website and your organization. Once you have obtained a security certificate, you will need to configure your web server to use it. Depending on your setup, this could be as easy as enabling a checkbox or it can mean configuring a lot of server configuration files. Third, we need to update the links within the website to point to the HTTPS secure version instead of the unsecure HTTP version. Then you might want to test your website. This can involve testing the website on multiple browsers and devices and checking for any errors or issues. Finally, it's important to keep track of the expiration date of your certificate and renew it before it expires. The good news is that we can automate this process using scripts. In conclusion, TLS protocol accomplishes three things. Encryption, so it hides the data being transferred from third parties. Authentication, this ensures that the parties exchanging information are who they claim to be. And integrity, it verifies that the data has not been forged or tampered with. The encryption part is done using symmetric cryptography because it's fast and therefore suitable for bulk encryption. However, symmetric cryptography can provide authentication. For that, we use asymmetric cryptography with the public-private key protocol. And last, we use the MAC algorithm to verify that the data hasn't been modified in transit.